Hello, I'm going to talk to you about the difficulties of teaching uh, a language, teaching English specifically. Um, I think maybe what's, uh, what I'd like to emphasize is teaching groups, because if you teach an individual, uh, it's, uh, it's actually quite easy and you don't necessarily need to have any qualifications or experience. Uh, all you do is sit down with the person and um, ask them questions and listen and correct their mistakes and work with them. It's all about giving them something to talk about and just being fairly alert for the amount of time that you're teaching them, which is often an hour. But with a group class, it's completely different because you've got a variety of personalities, you've got a variety of uh, learning styles. And I think that's, that's the first thing I want to talk about is learning styles. Uh, there's a lot of stuff talked about different learning styles and, and people have got their individual learning profiles. You talk about people who are visual learners, people who are auditory learners, people who are kinesthetic learners and um, I don't know whether I necessarily agree with a lot of that but, but what, very, what is very important to bear in mind is that when you teach you've got to cater to all these different learning styles um, and all that means is that you don't give students something to read for too long because only a certain portion of the class would benefit. Um, so you switch up the activities often, so you give them something to read, then you give them something to listen to, then you give them something to write, then you give them a talking exercise, and all of that's very important. So by the end of the lesson, by the end of the 90, 90 minutes is quite typical for a group class, there's been at least something in the lesson that each person has, um, has benefited from, because you can't please all the people all the time, it's that old adage. Um, the other thing about teaching is you've got to be um, a personality in the classroom because if you're not, then they're not going to be interested in what you have to say. And uh, although in TEFL, as opposed to other types of teaching, you're really not supposed to do too much in the le lesson, uh, you're not supposed to say too much in the lesson, um, but you're supposed to encourage them to speak. Um, but you've got to make sure that uh, you are a motivating uh, presence in the classroom. There's a number of ways of doing that, but you've got to have uh, energy, you've got to be patient, you've got to be alert, you've got to be friendly, you've got to be fair, there's a whole load of things. Anybody who's done any teaching will know about that. And um, and uh, the other thing about TEFL is you do a lot of group work, so you will uh, get the students to work in pairs or in groups, and you mix up the groups often so they're not working with the same person or people, so they all get an opportunity to speak. Uh, that is very important. What some students don't realise is that uh, there are enormous benefits to getting to work in groups rather than talking directly to the teacher. A lot of students say, can't we talk to you? But if you've got a student talking directly to the teacher, then everybody else is sitting there quietly. So you're maximising the talking time by getting to work in groups. And the stress is off a little bit. Talk about the uh, effective filter, which means that when people are stressed, their level of, uh, of uh, language will, uh, will decrease because of the nerves, so you're aiming to make it a pleasant environment. Uh, there's a whole lot of other things, but I'll leave it there for now.